Hello, it's uh, Brian from Robotacy again, and today I thought I'd show you a couple of uh, new options or cool options uh, for those of you who uh, want to get into the Arduino programming, and especially those of you who may have an older robot uh, that was based on, for example, a basic stamp or, uh, for example, the basic X like this one. Um, I, for example, have a whole bunch of uh, these robots, classroom set. And uh, they're programmable, or had the uh, basic X microprocessor on them, or microcontroller. And uh, I'd like to take them and upgrade them up to Arduino compatible devices. And so right here I do have the, uh, the basic X sitting here. And this is the, uh, one of the uh, Pro Mini boards, or Pro Mini like boards that are available now. Um, they're remarkably uh, affordable. You'll notice, unlike the uh, Teensy boards, for example, there is no USB uh, connector on the chip itself. You actually have to have a, a dongle that uh, hooks up to your uh, computer, which is hooked to your USB port, and then you can plug it in. Um, but it is nice. They're, they're both 24-pin uh, devices, the original Basic Stamp and the Basic X. And uh, they're pretty much a pin-for-pin -pin replacement. Certainly nothing bad is going to happen uh, to either your existing project or your uh, new project or anything to the chip if you slot it in. Um, there are differences. If you had the basic stamp, the basic basic stamp, I don't believe there are any analog ports on at least certainly the original ones. Um, the uh, the uh, Basic X had eight analog ports on this, whereas this one does have several analog ports, but um, I believe only four, one, two, three, four, are easily accessible from the 24-pin bus. Um, but that's okay. We're going to work with it, and uh, I'm going to set those aside. And what I want to do is actually start doing a little bit of breadboard-type work uh, just quickly. Uh, a couple quick tutorials. Um, I think most of you, uh, a good, good number of you, probably have already played with some Arduino device. And uh, but if you haven't, we're going to do it really quick. I'll show you a couple of things. I've already assembled this board. I've got an LED. I've got a uh, 1K one, uh, resistor in here. I've got it hooked up to pin two. I have the uh, chip itself grounded to this bus and actually at the other end of this long board you can see I have the bus connected on both sides so both sides of this breadboard are actually connected to the ground which is connected to the chip um, and of course I've got my dongle plugged in right there so you can see my chip is powered up everything is good um, over here, I've got a little piece of code, uh, just it's very similar to anyone you can download uh, for a tutorial on uh, the Arduino, which is going to make the light flash. A couple of things I'm going to show you. Um, it is hooked to pin 2, see the 2 right there. Uh, I'm going to take pin 2 and set it to output. I'm an old uh, assembly and uh, binary programmer I can actually put that as output perhaps it might be easier to understand but a one is just as fine and uh, so I've set it to output and um, now I'm going to let's see I think that's set to low. now I'm going to send it a signal I'm going to tell the pin to go high to output voltage um, and then I'm going to delay it for 100 milliseconds, and then I'm going to set it low, and I'm going to delay it for 100 milliseconds. And if all goes well, when I upload it, um, we should see. There you go. The light is flashing. Uh, just to point out a couple of things, just uh, I will show you that. For example, if you if you are more familiar with ones and zeros, there's nothing stopping me from getting rid of all of these right here. And I will make these all. There we go. We'll just go ones and zeros instead of highs and lows. It should work the same. And yes, it does. Works the same. 
Uh, we can make it a little prettier if you want. Uh, we can put a we can uh, get an integer in here. Let's call it um, LED zero, and let's set it equal to two. And now I can maybe uh, this might make it easier to read. Oops. In case it's important. Alright, and this should work the same as well. Yep, everything's good. So you can see we can label these, which will be handy once we build bigger and bigger circuits and more and more stuff. Uh, what else can I do with a simple piece of code? Um, I tell you what, we should introduce real quick. Maybe uh, we'll just create another little void and let's. Whoops, gosh, I'm having a hard time typing today. Void. Um, let's make our own little delay. Uh, there we go. And what I'm going to do is make it so that if I have a whole string of these things, I only have to change one of the, uh, the the time settings here. So I'm going to make them all tying in. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. And do that. I'm going to close off. And now I'm going to take and replace all of these. Now, if I change this up here, I can make it say something obvious. Let's go 500. We'll make it real long. It should change both of these. And there you go. So now I've shown you that you can change any of these to highs or lows, or you can use uh, numerics if you're into that. It's going to be important as I move ahead, by the way. Um, and I can create these little subroutines, and I can call upon them and keep things simple and neat. And um, I'm going to move quick now. This is going to be the longest video. So I will see you again soon. Thanks.